Alright guys, well I thought we'd try doing the video just a little differently this time. Uh, I know it's not live, but I thought I would get better video this way. So we're going to start working on uh, the cheek over on this side. As I've said several times, what we do is we, we need to think about this as a 3D form. So if I have my light coming this direction, that means that the bridge of the nose will interrupt light going over this way, but there will be ridges of sections like right here, there's a, a little bit of fur that catches a little bit of light that does come down this direction. So I have to keep in mind the direction of my light as I bring in my darks because I don't want to fill in the grid of the paper too heavily right at this stage. So I'm going to go ahead and start working with the black. I do like to get the darker colors in there first. Um, always remember the direction of your fur. It's very important. And I am coming right here into this white patch because that will help give it the sense of being fur as well. Remember to not only go the direction of your fur, but think about the shape of the fur hair itself. They often have a bit of a curve to them. They're, they're not just straight in most cases. And remember to turn your pencil too. That'll help you keep your sharper point on there. In this case, there's a bright patch of fur with actually a pretty dark section behind it. Instead of doing actual fur lines, I'm doing just a little area of just a bit of a scribble. That's because there's very fine hairs there too, and rather than drawing every individual hair, that allows me to, you know, let me turn off that light, maybe that'll keep me from getting too much shadow on here from my hand. Anyway, um, but when you have really bright light or really heavy shadow, you don't always need individual hair marks. Uh, in fact, it's much better to give the impression of fur by doing kind of more of a scribbly line. I know that sounds kind of probably a little counterintuitive, but... It works, I promise, just trust me. Always trust your process, and me. <laughs> and sometimes to get the impression of hair poking out, little dots, little circles help um, keep that in. By the way, you'll notice I've got a little piece of parchment paper here. It's set down in one place, I'm not scooting around. I'm lifting my hand as I go. Uh, that prevents me from damaging work I've done before. All right, there's actually quite a dark section right here. Because it's as dark as it is, my pencil is not going to get dark enough, so I'm going to use uh, my hard pastel for this purpose. And it's right over here by the eyelid. So I'm just going to very, very carefully work that in because I do not want to mess up my eye. The eye is the most important part of this drawing. Starting to get there. There's a bit of a shadow right here, so I'm going to start building that in a little bit. Just very gentle, building it up. Keeping that direction, getting some wild hairs in there that are a little heavier than others. And it just makes it look more believable, that's all. Because there's always gonna be little dark patches of skin that you'll see through little areas of the fur. It may not seem that obvious or overt, but they're there, I promise. And sometimes doing them slightly off the direction makes them look even more like they're coming towards you. Which is the way this fur is doing right here because of the bulbous nature of this brow. Um, so I, that's why I'm kind of doing those little odd uh, directions. And forgive me because it's, it's always hard to talk and draw at the same time. It it's, can be difficult to tear your concentration between two different things. All right, so I'm just doing some marks right now just for my own sake. These are what I call guard, uh, sorry, guide marks. They help me make sure I'm keeping the direction of my fur consistent and matching with my drawing. So I just, one, one color or the other that's common for that section, I'll just use it to do these. There we go. All right. There are some spots on this section over here I'm going to start working in. I'm going to go in the same direction as that fur as well. I know you hear me preach it a lot, but it's obviously a reason for that. I'm not too worried if I make a mistake. It's easy to fix. And now that I've got my lines, sometimes it helps to come through just to make the certain sections a little darker and I just do a little bit of a circular motion. 
because if I just fill it in with line, it'll actually never quite fill in all the way. But I want the impression of there being marks here. That's why I'm still doing them. See how much darker that comes out? And I'm doing the black marks first because doing the white marks over them uh, allows it to look more like it's actually part of the fur. Because the fur is all about layers. Uh, it lays over each other. It, I mean, it's, it's all connected. It's all part of the same, <laughs> the same Sunday outfit. So it needs to look like it belongs together. Okay, just some, I've got the marks basically marked out here. Um, you may or may not be able to see them. I've done a little bit of pan pastel over some of them. I don't do them all as dark because some of them are further away. The further away they are, the less that they appear dark. The more they kind of blend in with the round surroundings. Okay, so we've got the curve of the cheek here. There's some small spots in this section, so I'm going to fill in some of those. And then there is a very rough, not, it's kind of like an abnormal marking. It's not got a consistent pattern to it that goes through here. So I'm just filling that in a little bit. Uh, since this one has the light area over here, kind of more mid-tone here, shadows really dark through here, and a little bit of bright area in, around the eye, I'm, I'm just, again, I, I know I preach this all the time, but you, you want to keep with the contours of the face, not just with the line marks of the fur. Because um, both of those together tell you the story of the shape of the face. And there's longer and longer hairs the further back in the face that you go. Alright, so since we're in the shadowed area, using a blue shade, uh, hopefully you can see this okay, uh, actually works really well for giving the impression of white fur and shadow. You can see how delicate my marks are. I'm barely putting any pressure behind this because I don't want them to stand out too terribly much, but I do want them to be there. So this cat has a very definitive line of white fur, or gray fur I suppose, right through here. So I'm trying to make sure I've got that first, and then I'll just build up as I go. I don't want it to compete and get too much of the same tone through too much of the area because what will happen instead is you'll just wind up with all mid-tones. If it all looks the same, then there's no interest. It becomes boring. So you got to watch out for that. Alright, there's also a fairly significant lighter line of fur right through here. And you'll see I'm turning my pencil. Occasionally I'll need to wipe off the tip because what it's doing is it's picking up the color I've already got down. Frequent turning. There we are. The irregularity there with some of the hairs. Some of them a little heavier than others. Because that'll make it look more natural. And it kind of fades down to a little bit darker shade down there. So there's also a little bit of a line of lighter fur through here that helps accentuate the shape of the cheek too. So I'm just putting in a couple of extra hairs there. All right. And then, sorry, my camera went out there. There's also a much brighter section of it right over here because this has a very distinct shape next to a spot. And it comes right over into this section, which is why I kind of pre-prepped some of it with a little bit of light fur. All right. And you don't want to have whites there. You might have a couple of hairs that'll have white, but you don't want to really overdo it with white there until your very last stage if you need to do a couple of lighter colored hairs. You can see how blue this one is. So I'm just coming back in a couple of areas to cool off some of the tone to give it the sense of there being light fur in shadow. I'm not doing it everywhere. I, I don't want to overwhelm or take away from some of the areas from the sections that are actually lighter or darker. And I'm generally doing it fairly close to where the actual shadows themselves are. Again, turning the pencil as I go. 
I'm going to start bleeding it over down here. You can see it doesn't stand out terribly bright, which is exactly what I want. If you would like to see the drawing of either of the eyes in process, uh, those are two separate videos. I've got this eye uh, in one video and then the fur following around in the second video. Uh, this one, unfortunately, I did not discover that Instagram did not save live streaming until after that one was done, but this eye is my favorite anyway. <laughs> All right, so this one has a couple of really bright spots. So I'm trying not to overwhelm this section because I'm gonna come back later. But I do want some of this blue in there because it's a pretty rich blue in the picture. In fact, I'm gonna to move to an even richer blue for part of the edge. When you're looking at this from a distance, that'll make more sense. Having the blue right here along this edge, it, it, it'll actually visually make the eye see it as being actually a, a heavier shadow, but it makes it rich in tone versus just a boring black and white image. That's not what I want. I don't want a boring image. Who wants a boring image hanging on their wall? So I'm taking the sense of color of, of how light breaks up and fragments whenever it's interrupted by things like shadows. And I'm just bringing that in here. It may look a little richer on the screen than it does in real life though. But the closer you are to the bright side of things, the more warm, like browns, oranges, reds, closer on the shaded side, you want to lean toward the blues to get those accented colors you're looking for. But you still want to mix in a couple of warm shades here and there, because that will keep it from going flat. So. For instance, here's, so we've got this curve of, of this part of the eyelid. So this side is the shaded side. We have a brighter top side and then a little bit warmer right here where the light's coming across and that will balance the blue. I am going to come back in with some other white colors um, or shades to help accentuate that too. So just pretty random spots. It doesn't need to be consistent in any one area. Doing it that way will uh, make it more believable. Oh, I need to get some blue in that section too. Let me go ahead and do that. Not a lot, just here and there, just a few marks. It does not take much. If you do too much, it stands out too much. <laughs> Shocker, right? I don't want it just to be blue. It's, that's not the point. The point is to give it the illusion of being in the shadow. So this is a warm gray versus a, a cool gray. I'm using that to get some of the lighter hairs in here for the areas that need it. So again, just following my reference image. Oh, this one's got a loose. Here's a, here's a good little tip. So this is when, why you never drop your pencils. You ready? Look at that. This is not the, sh the fault of the sharpener or the pencil. I dropped this pencil. I felt it moving, so I'm going to go ahead and sharpen it really quick, get my point back. I strongly suggest the AFMAT, A-F-M-A-T, and uh, you can find it for about $17, that's what it looks like, uh, on Amazon. It's like your old school sharpeners that uh, have those three tubes with the spiral cut, and but it, it does... Unlike other sharpeners, it actually grips the pencil, so it's not wiggling around inside. And then look at this point that it gets you. Isn't that amazing? I love it. It's It came from a friend of mine, Catherine Martinez. Oop, let me put this back up here before I muck anything up. Uh, sorry, that's uh, people sending me messages. One of my good friends, uh, Lauren, uh, her name on Instagram is Potato Art Studios. Strongly encourage you to check her stuff out. She is precious. She also does reviews on things too. Um, for art supplies and methods. We're pretty good friends on Instagram. All right, so get some of this built in. You always have a little wild hair here and there. And there's certain sections that are just gonna have brighter hairs. So light's coming down this way. This part of the brow actually blocks light this direction. 
So I'm keeping that in mind and not going past this, this line. And again, turning the brush, or brush, <laughs> sorry, I usually paint, uh, turning the pencil. And this is a raised section, so it's gonna get much brighter hairs. And then, just because, normally I wait till later to do this, but since, <laughs> sorry, um, laughing at something she sent me. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get some brighter hairs. Notice how I'm keeping the curve of the hair. Okay, and there's actually shadow that curves right here. I'm gonna come back and accent that, but for now, I'm gonna get the, where the hair curves, catches the most light on the outer part of the curve. So where it curves like this, the top part of the curve, that gets the brightest light of the hair. So I'm keeping that in mind as I do these. This one, one or two up there. Okay, so as I mentioned, there is actually a shadow that comes right here because of the shape of the eyebrow. This is a bit of a purple shade and it does an excellent job of doing that. I'm just kind of very lightly scribbling it in. Nothing too heavy. And it'll add to the blue that's there and give me more of a shadow. I'm just doing some random quick marks to darken that area. It's actually a bit of a warm color versus cool too, but it does a beautiful job when you're working on shadows. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go back to the black for just a bit to continue working on some guide marks. This fur starts to get a lot longer the further out the face that you go. Just remember to continue to keep your direction. And they tend to cross over in places without being all the same direction. Uh, so be aware of that. Don't be consistent with the same motion on every mark or you will lose that appearance of it being realistic. I know this part may not be showing up very well right now. Uh, that's just, of course, because of the tone of the paper that I'm using. But um, it, it really does help to build that up first and then come back in with your lighter and lighter marks. Okay, this is a warm brown, uh, sorry, not brown, warm gray, my apologies. Uh, there is actually some light coming down on the fur over here. It's more so, uh, this patch of fur is actually kind of rounded as well. So I'm gonna keep that in mind as I build this up, just a little bit at a time. Very light, I don't wanna fill in my grit. I've already got blue down in places here, you may be able to see it. And this is where it'll start to show through a bit. It won't just be covered up, it'll actually show through. There we go. Very, very gentle. As you can see, the paper now is working with me on creating this appearance of fur because it's so dark beneath it. Okay, I'm going to come in with some blue. It's a very light sky blue to get some of the brighter patches. And there are irregular patches of bright versus dark, so just keep that in mind. Here we are. And occasionally I'll come back up a little higher, even though I've more or less finished some of these areas up here. Sometimes it's good just to come back in and rework some of the line with a color that you may not have been working with before. This way it carries over and makes it well, belong in that area better. Hope that made sense. It's, like I said, it's always hard to do this and draw at the same time. All right, so this fur right here has a pretty bright edge by comparison to the rest of it, so. And it's kind of patch fur. So there's patches of it together, grouping. Oh. 
getting some curve in. A little wild hairs here and there. It's very necessary. And I'm, I'm getting this side as much done as possible uh, and moving to the right. And that's because uh, otherwise I'll, I'll be working on top of sections I've already done. Normally I would not have already done these uh, when I'm working with pastel, but I did them for the sake of showing the process. <sighs> Sorry, I don't normally suggest blowing on this, but I'm using hard pencils uh, right now as so there's very little dust coming off of it. And you see I'm just very, very, very lightly touching this section with the pencil. Except for a couple of hairs here and there, I will to just give the impression of hair. There we go. Let the paper work for you sometimes. Again, getting guide hairs in. Tell me the direction I need to be going in. Sometimes you'll have a section that has like really long hair you need to point out. So that's what those were for. Okay. Now this section behind here is a spot. And I don't want to do the white hair before it and then have the word spot in afterwards. As you can see, I'd already dusted it with a, um, <laughs> the word slipping my mind here, pan pastel uh, kind of thing. So I'm going back in now with my hard pastel and just filling that in with that spot. Just like I did before, I'm going to start off with a line work for it. Uh, because it's longer hair, I'm going to get some little you know, crazy ones out and about in a couple of spots. And then we do just a little bit of a rub in circular motion just to get it really dark at the core of that spot. A couple of flyaway black hairs right through here, just because it's a dark section. There's a long fur right here that sticks out. There we go. Okay. Now this section out here is actually supposed to be blurry uh, to get that effect while still getting some dark tone I'm going to do the lines and then I'm going to come back with a brush over it and go perpendicular to them so instead of you know mark making what it'll do is just blend my marks down but it'll still have the impression of fur and that's how you get the blurred effect there we go paying attention to my source image as I go. There's a black spot right here. Just get that built in. Don't worry about those white patches. Those are going to be filled in too. There we go. Okay. So this is what I was talking about when it comes to going perpendicular with the brush. Let me grab my brush. So this is a makeup brush, very soft. Um, it actually used to be white. And if I go across them, it actually blurs and takes the line marks out. And that's, I was extremely, extremely soft on the, on the uh, pressing down. All right, so we are in the shadow area of the head. And as I mentioned before, blue is your friend. So this is a very dark blue. Um, that's because the further it is into the cool sections, the, or sorry, the shadow, it's a, it's a cooler color in temperature. I think of blues as being a cool color in temperature, warms like reds, yellows, uh, browns, those are warm colors, so they are in the sun. And for the eye, whenever it's further back, this really stands out more. Um, and gives you that impression of shadow. Okay, where'd my brush go? I have a habit of setting things off to the sides next to me, and so I don't always realize where I put them. All right, so that patch of white fur, ooh, I almost dropped one. That patch of white fur that's over here, it's, it's actually too bright. So instead of using a pencil on that, I'm gonna tone that down using a little bit of pan pastel. So I'm just, I've just got uh, my brush here with a little bit of black on it, nothing too substantial. I just want to tone it down, not get rid of it. There we go. You can see how it's kind of coming out there. I can also tamp a little bit of blue into it and come back in instead of it, see like that. 
Sorry, my dog's barking. There we go. All right, now there is a bit more blue through some of the white fur here. I might as well go ahead, starting at the edge of where the white fur is, and just get it in there just a little bit. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit of the sense of fur. And now I'm coming back over it from the edge, dragging in in the same direction the fur goes. This will be important when I get down into the fur itself there. And to do that fur, I want a darker gray um, for that. Not too dark, but a darker gray. Let's see. I may need to test one out here. This may be too dark for what I want, but we will see. It's still a warm, warm color. No, it's not too dark. All right, that's good. This is a very shaded, shadowed area. It's also a longer fur. So when you're doing longer furs, you, you wanna be careful. Uh, fur layers from back to front. So I'm gonna start on this section here. Since this is mainly gonna be um, a dark area, normally I would go ahead and work in my black, which I will do in just a moment here. I just wanna start on the edge. Okay, it's kind of like a, having a guide. And since there is a lot of black here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, bring it into that blue. See, um, that'll help redefine the edge of the fur. And I want it to be pretty dark right there because this is a very heavily shadowed area on that section. Just redefining the hairs, so no worries. I make a mistake, I'm not doing it heavily enough. I can't go back over it, so not a big deal. And if I have a blurred area that I need to have some of the marks on, I can just do a little bit of a circle work. Very, very, very light. Don't wanna to have too much there and then come back over with hair uh, markings. little bit of the pan pastel where I can smooth this down a bit because like I said this is supposed to be a blurred section I'm just trying to build up the darkness there oh sorry I can't see my resource image as well I've got a little bit of a light glare on that bottom section for my resource so I'm just kind of trying to see around it okay there we go There's not a whole lot of form to these areas, so that's why I'm kind of doing more in the way of a circular uh, motion. It'll keep me from getting too far uh, into a sh actual solid shape. But still keep the darkness of that area of the fur, because this, this cat's in dappled shadow, shadowed light. Shadowed and light. Ugh, can't even talk, sorry. Hopefully that made sense. So I'm trying to keep in mind where the fur crosses over itself. It makes lighter and darker sections. You can use your finger to blend. Um, I suggest using a glove if you're gonna do that because otherwise you're gonna leave um, skin oils behind. And unfortunately, uh, pastels, graphites, charcoals, they love skin oil and so what they do is they are actually the, the dust is really drawn to it. All right, right there is a, a sh uh, not just a shadow but an actual spot so I'm just working it in. I know that one's gonna be pitch black in that section. There we go. It's longer hair. Okay, I'm gonna start moving this over. Just trying to work in the outer edge. You don't want to be too consistent. It is long hair, and you are going to come over it again with lighter pencils. So don't worry too much here. Just pay attention to your source image frequently. Make sure you're getting the patterns in the right places. 
Okay. You can see that's starting to come together a little bit there. All right. I don't want to go through all of it. I'm just um, just tamping in a little bit on the outer edge here. Uh, not the center part. If I were to do the center part of each of these spots, it would actually remove some of the color. Where it won't come off whenever you lightly, you know, if, if you were to bump it on anything, it wouldn't come off. But if you take a brush over it, it will. Okay. So here I've, I've got a sanding block that I sharpen with. And I put a little bit of the, I just did a little bit of this here with some of the gray. The purpose of that is there is a patch of fur right over here that just very lightly needs to come out a little more visibly. Not a lot, just a tiny amount. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm just gonna use the side of the block here, wipe off the excess, and then I'll just carefully work it in. This will keep my blurred effect because the camera focus is not on this end, it's only on the cat's face. All right, hopefully that's making sense. And I'm going perpendicular in this case for the sake of just blending it in. If I were to go the same direction, I would not, the, the lines would not really loosen up and soften up. Instead, they would uh, reinforce and actually make them longer. So I'm gonna avoid that. All right, so here I've got my cooler gray color and you know and temperature oh wait there's more spot I needed to kind of darken sorry one second let me get that area right here it's too bright so I'm dulling that down with some of my black uh, rub off here there we go I'm, I was just tamping it down I'm not actually moving the brush uh, across so I'm just carefully applying. Here we go. All right, much better. Not too bright now. All right, so now, coming back in with a pencil, um, I'm just gonna lightly build up the fur. It's lighter in some areas than others. And it does come up into here just a little bit. see a spot I need to work on like literally a spot <laughs> uh, makes me laugh also you might see some of the pencil marks are not hiding as well as I would like for them to I'm just going to use a darker shade with that section just to blend them in a little better that way I can kind of fix it if I were to just use only light color over it it would not actually hide it All right, that's a bit better. Now I'll come back in with a pencil. Again, turning the pencil frequently is your lifesaver. And you'll notice I get a couple of wild hairs here and there just going wherever they want, a little bit longer than the rest around it. You'll notice that in you know, living animals, your own pets, if you have them, that you'll, there's always these crazy little hairs. They're, they're called wild hairs, I think. And, uh, you know, it's definitely a, a fitting name for them. <laughs> I don't want to get it too heavy with the line work um, because this also is a area that is a little bit blurry, but there's definite line marks here. So what we do is build them up a little bit at a time and then I will just very gently come over it with my brush. And again, think of them as um, sections of fur. Some, when it's long fur, you, you kind of have to define out sections. Because they, they hair groups together. It's lighter in some areas than others, so I'm, I'm just keeping that in mind. I am going to come back in this with some darker um, line work. Oh, I see another spotted area. I'd like to go ahead and get in there now and get that taken care of before I get too far gone here. It's actually right down into here. 
again, turning as I go. This one, it's long hair, so I'm going to get more erratic marks. And it does come up into this cheek for a bit, right up here. And I'm doing a little bit of perpendicular just to strengthen the darkness in certain areas, um, but only in areas where it's going to actually fill in. Okay. Longer hair means wilder directions. It does not need to be consistent and should not be. Finding some of the patches of hair a little bit more in places. Don't worry if you get it to darken a spot, that's so easy to fix, so never stress over that. This is a very forgiving medium. Okay, starting to come together. I'll worry about that section down there in a bit. Okay, need that slightly lighter. Um, it's still dark, but just start bringing that into places here. It'll dull down some of the lighter hairs, but uh, brighten up some of the darker ones. But having it warm really helps it play against the shadow as well. Again, longer hairs. Think of it in groups. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to move that. So I can pull it back. Sorry about that. There. Okay. Now. There is light shining through right here a little bit where it kind of cuts off. I'm going to use my dark blue. Oh, there goes that again. I'm going to use my dark blue to accentuate where that shadow is just along the edge of where it is. Now, it may not look like a lot with blue right here in the section that it's at, but it, it'll. whenever I bring in some of the other colors, uh, that's when it will come out and shine. In, in the best ways, of course. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Come in with a little bit of a lighter blue. This is a pretty rich blue. Um, the reason I'm using this is because of how dark this shadow is. But I still want to denote the lightness of the fur that's here. If it had been in light, that it would be a much brighter color. So that's where the purpose of the French ultramarine color comes from. Um, it just helps me denote the sense of a shadow. Just coming in just a little bit around the edges of some of these spots as well. I'm not really too worried about the sense of fur mark. Um, not trying to create too much of a sense of fur. This is just a shadowed area that is blurry, so. No need for intense marks. It does help break up a little bit of the edge. There we go. Okay, so let's go to a slightly lighter color. Where did you go? I have a lot of pencils out to my side here. All right, a warm gray. And this we're gonna use to build up right along the edge of here. A little bit more so. As you get your darks in, it, it actually becomes a lot easier to see where you're going with your lights and with your colors. So it's, it's very helpful to build that up and then come back in, make your adjustments as you need. Don't stress about it. If you don't get a color right, it's not the end of the world. Um, you can often blend them right down. Again, working over dark color, so I want to make sure that I am uh, turning the pencil as I go. 
go. And that's why I did this first, uh, this first, then brought that in and this, and that's just to uh, furthest back, mid-ground, foreground for that section. And there's a little bit brighter of a light that's in this section too, so that's part of why I'm doing it a little heavier handed in that section. And it's a bit brighter right here as well. It's also a shorter looking fur um, type. So it's just kind of a arcing, somewhat of a half moon. And then there's a really bright one where it comes right there. There's a sh not just a shadow, but an actual spot that's right up here. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and get that in before I get too carried away. It's okay that I'm marking over my white spot. I'm not that worried. There's that. Looks like there's quite a bit dark right here. Let me just fold that in. And then where this section, see how that's white, that's mid-tone, uh, there's actually a raised, uh, that white area is raised, which means that the area right behind it needs to be darker. It's not an actual spot or anything, it's just simply a darker patch of fur. And there's a few of them in here too. Let me see if I can see my marks a little better. Got you there. Sorry. Oh, I need to move that again. I was leaning out too hard. All right, just trying to spot my marks. Dun dun. dun. Sorry, bad joke. Cannot help it. I'm full of them. Okay. Here those are. pretty dark spots. So just kind of working those in. There's also one down here and down here. There we go. Sorry, I know I'm being a little quiet. I'm just hunting down these where the spots belong to make sure I get them in the right order. All right, now I can darken this section because this one should be really dark. All right, and I've noticed that this by comparison is actually quite dark as well. So I'm gonna come back in and put some hairs in there just a bit darker. Help keep that shape. There we go. It's just a generally a bit darker on this side. So again, darker marks. It's just all part of the process. Uh, color corrections, light and dark corrections. I'm sitting back fairly frequently so I can see where those are. I really want the sense of there being actual 3D, you know, quality to it as much as possible. I'm not perfect. I'm at that. I'm I'm still learning uh, pastels myself, but um, I feel like I've, I'm getting a better and better grasp. The more drawings I do with them, the more they make sense to me. Same thing you'll find happens for you too. Just give them a chance. I know they're expensive at first, but places like Jerry's Art Arama. Blick Art Supplies, uh, you can even get coupons through places like Michael's, and you can get very, very good pricing um, on really good quality pastels on whenever you find them on sales. So not to worry, It's although it's expensive at first, just keep an eye open for those sales and you won't spend nearly as much money. And then you can practice more. <laughs> Or if you have really good family that has the ability to spend the money on you, then, you know, makes for great Christmas presents.
just working in some of this blue in the right areas here. All right. So, we'll get one more bit of shading in here. This one is a bit of a purple, and it's actually gonna help drop some of the depth here. I'm just gonna use it right through this section. And I'm actually gonna come in with a bit of a brown also. Where did it go? I have a lot of pencils off to my right-hand side here. Okay, so the brown is gonna be used just in a few places just to liven up this shadow. White fur tends to also pick up color around it. So it's very rare that you're actually painting or drawing white fur so much as the reflective color it picks up. There's actually quite a bit of warmth down here. There we go. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up for right now. I will pick this back up later and um, we'll chat some more. Thank you so much if you have any questions. Just uh, feel free to ask and um, appreciate your time. We'll get this wrapped up not too much longer. Uh, I mean, it's flying by. The hardest part, I would argue, is the muzzle. And uh, we'll see. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a great day.